Yeah, Jack, it's your boy Big Nine, Mr. Worldwide himself. You dig me? You know what I'm saying? Catch me anywhere and everywhere. We over here with the One by One Network, and it's going down. You hear me? Yeah. Hey, what's going down? It's your boy Big Nine, Mr. Worldwide. We on the One by One Network. You dig me? Man, I'm from the south side, southwest side of my town, man, Houston, Texas. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Third Coast. Third Coast? Yeah, that's how I like to present it. Uh, I like it. it. Yeah, yeah, I ain't heard of Third Coast in a minute. Not yeah. too many people actually read Third Coast. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people from the East Coast, West Coast, I gotta make them known. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm well rounded over here, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm. I got ties like, on every side of my city, so I can't really just say like one side. Like my family, they from South Park. Okay. I grew up on the West, you know what I'm saying? The Swat, all through the West Hummer. Mm -hmm. Back to her and Clark, I got family on the now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Acres <laughs> Homes, you know what I'm saying? So it's just it's just everywhere and anywhere with me. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in Houston? Uh growing up in Houston, man, I ain't gonna lie. I had a cool little regular little childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, so I grew up in South Park up until like I was in like first grade. You know, I slid to the SWAT. And like, you know what I'm saying? If you're from the SWAT, you know, or well, certain areas of the SWAT, it's, it's really pretty chill up until you get to like high school. <laughs> but then like, shit, by that time I had slid to the other side of West Timer. I went to West Side and stuff like that. So, you know what I'm saying? It just is what it is all about shit, really, how, who you are and how you act. So, you know so what I'm saying? when did you start your music? Was it during the high school days? Uh, high school days. You so know what, what were you into first? Yeah. First, I mean, initially I was a photographer. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But like, I've been writing poetry since I was a kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, that was always a thing. Like, other people around me would be like, "Man, when you going? You should record this shit." I was like, never on that wave because I wasn't big on like presenting things. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, but I had came up with one of my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Sludge Vaughn. And that's Slim Nephew, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like the whole Snob Game Records thing was us, you know what I'm saying? So like from, shoot, I say my freshman year, like from 09, all the way until, you know what I'm saying? That was like my presence. I was like an A&R with that, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just holding my placement, selling clothes, doing, doing what I was doing, but I always had a camera in my hand at the time. Right, right, no, it hadn't stepped to the mic yet. Yeah, no. Nah, what nah. made you get uh, pick up a camera? Uh, man, I ain't gonna lie, I had a camera in my hand since I was a baby. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember being in, in South Park. It was my, it was my older brother, uh, like prom. You know what I'm saying? Me and him, like, we we tend to have years apart. So you know, back then we had the little, the little, the little chime, the little, the little crank cameras. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta load up the charge. Yeah, you gotta load that mug up. You hear me? So like, I remember like taking, you know what I'm saying? Having one of those and taking his prom photos. Like, I was probably like. I was like five at the time, you know what I'm saying, real young. Yeah. And no, I couldn't have been like five. I know I probably was though. Yeah, you know, like around that little age, you know what I'm saying? Like back then, I saw, you know what I'm saying? I had just recently found those photos too. That's how I like really started confirming certain things, you know what I'm saying? But I've always had like a camera thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny how sometimes you don't even realize, man, like I was into that as a kid and I didn't realize, you know, that the passion was there. Yeah, like, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so pretty much high school, you was on the camera. You said you did clothes as well. Yeah, we saw, you know, I said we used to sell like snob shirts and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, representing the label and stuff like that. And uh, you know, teachers were buying that shit. We had right. like the youngest, like, you know, girls buying that shit. Like everybody was you know, repping snob at the time. What was the process like of getting that started? Like whose idea was like, hey, let's make shirts and then like who came up with the designs, where'd you go to get them? Um, you know, so I think Vaughn did that for the most part, you know what I'm saying? Like we we carried like I was a freshman, you know what I'm saying, when he was a senior. Okay. So he had already left. So we just kept it going because we was the youngest that was still there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we had one of his aunties, you know what I'm saying, making making the shirts and we would just be pressing moles and going about our day, really. You know what I'm saying? Like I was a, uh, I, I had a photography class, but it was also like a, you know, for, you know, a Photoshop and all this other shit class. So we were still running plays, you know, doing our thing like this and the third. But, you know, this, the shirts were simple. It just say snob on the front. And snob at the time, uh, it stood for success, not other bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people had like different perspectives on how mm -hmm. we carried ourselves because of what Snob says and what that, that actual word means. Mm -hmm. But you know, the thing about it was we knew who we were at the time. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't really question ourselves. I don't question myself. I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak for myself. <laughs> I don't question who I am. So, you Have know. you always known who you were? Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't about, I knew who I was. Mm -hmm. I didn't know technically what I was gonna do every, right, given, right, every right. given second, you know what I'm saying? But you know, like, 
my confidence and who I was, you know what I'm saying? I had to make a little transition from it being like a view that's a cocky individual to a, a confident individual, yeah. mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And just a well understanding person, you know what I'm saying, for myself and the people that's around me. So that's how that came about for sure. Okay, okay. So tell me about, all right, now it's now your senior year in high school, about to graduate. What has kind of changed uh, from your freshman year to your senior year? And where's your head at now? Oh uh, man, senior year. I had lost my best friend, you know what I'm saying? She had died in a, uh, a shooting in Cyprus in y'all previous school. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was like a little shooting at a house party uh, in Cyprus. In Cyprus? Yeah, like random shit type shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, two people died, she got killed. And uh, that kind of like threw me off. Like, that was one of my most serious losses, you know what I'm saying? Serious losses, mm -hmm. personally, you know what I'm saying? Like, outside of family type of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of like what got me like, ready to do something, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was like my girl, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I love that girl, you mm -hmm. dig me? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? So that's where my mind started like a little racing and doing a little different things. And then shit, within that year, graduating and then that summer after, you know, people around just start looking different to me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So that's when I started realizing like, it's time, it's time for me to do me, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And figure something out. And then around that given time, um, I had just started coming up. I've always been, I've always been like a real idealist. You know what I'm saying? Like I can come up with something and make it shape. Mm -hmm. But what I started realizing was boys around me wasn't trying to listen to what I had going on. Like even if it was for the better good of everybody else, everybody had their own agendas. So the process of realizing that I wasn't a part of a team no more to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? I had to leave for myself is what came about, you know what I'm saying? So when I started Central Underground, which was my first business, you know what I'm saying, that was a me thing. Like I had boys around me trying to like steal my ideas type shit mm -hmm. and like take over and do their thing with my ideas. And I just had to like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Like excommunicado, all that. And shit, I just started rocking my way. Mm -hmm. When you, like back to the statement of like knowing yourself, when you kind of like, when you kind of like really know yourself, like, you know what I'm saying, the type of person you are and the type of people you want to be around, you know what I'm saying? like. You know, you start getting yourself in other environments. You like this ain't it. Mm -hmm. so you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like even when I was at TSU, I, I rock with TSU simply because my older brother. You know what I'm saying? He graduated from TSU. You know what I'm saying? He got his master's for journalism there, did his thing. So, you know, and like me and my brother wasn't really close knit to that extent. So I wanted to just establish like a little legacy type thing. You know what I'm saying? Like between me, him, my brother. I mean, my nephews and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, create a little sense of something in my family. So I was like, okay, you know, I'm gonna go to TSU, walk this Tiger Walk, you know what I'm saying? But when I got to TSU, I realized that, you know what I'm saying, I'm really not a social player, you know what I'm saying? Like, I talk when necessary, you know what I'm saying? Like, growing up, everybody knew who I was. It wasn't that I was like the most popular dude or nothing. It was just strictly that people respected me, they rocked with me, you know what I'm saying? Then everywhere I went, it was always like that. Like, you know, I'm gravitational. But like TSU, like I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm in class. I'm out. <laughs> I'm walking. You know, so I didn't stay on campus. So I ain't had that like that dormitory lifestyle to where you know people see me everywhere. This much like, nah, man. No, probably, the only place you probably see me was on that pool table. That's where I made a lot of my connections. I ain't gonna lie. Run the boys down on the pool table. Hey, I like pool. Hey, you feel me? Like that's <laughs> just a grown man way of like you know connecting. So I'm a networker. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, like, as a networker, you. You here to make the right connection. Y'all ain't here to talk to everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm really not one of them guys. Like I tell people a lot of times about music now, like, I don't do too much talking. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when I do speak it, you know, you're gonna hear me. Mm -hmm. So that's what TSU brought to me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like the right connections. Were you still doing stuff with your camera at that time? Uh at the time, yeah, but it wasn't like at TSU. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I was strictly just just like networking amongst people that was rocking like uh, at the time. I think uh, Country Cowboy was still going there. Um, a lot of people was at TSU that I rock with still to this day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like, it was just, you know, just, you know, college life. Right, you know what I'm right. saying? Going to class, going about my day, going to play some pool until my next class. Like, you know what I'm saying? I really didn't like, uh, uh, outside, like, you know, going to like the club, you know, the parties and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But other than that, like, you know what I'm saying? I really wasn't too really, like, intertwined with TSU lifestyle. Right, if you knew the things you knew now, would you have done things differently? No, I'm still the same type of person. Yeah. I'm I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still the same type of person. Like, it just, you know, we gonna talk, we gonna have, we gonna talk. But other than that, I'm not here to force conversation just to be, 
you know, in the mix. Like I do some other things, like you know, get into like the uh, more pledging lifestyles and mm -hmm. you know something like that. You know, something that's gonna network me a little bit better. But you know, outside of that, but like that was the time period of when I started the Central Underground stuff. So I was still in the I was still in the Houston scene. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like outside of that, like school is school. But like when I left. You know, I'm at the house we creating, you know what I'm saying? I was working with my boy, uh, his name Pablo. He used to go by Art of Visuals, you know what I'm saying? Now he go by Records Creator, you know what I'm saying? So me and him started working like real tough together. He was with me a lot, and see, that's really what it was. Okay, so when did the music come into play? Music came into play, um, personally, like in terms of like me hopping on a, like, on a record of any sort, like two, two years ago. I'm going on my third year right now. Mm. And I was like halfway. Uh, like managing our artist at the time and she was in the studio and working on a little record and I was just writing to the I was writing to it you know what I'm saying because I can like you know what I'm saying like yeah you had like, words for the yeah like, you know I was trying to help out in a sense but I just started writing my own verse mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie yeah. and that was tough yeah so, <laughs> I ain't never recorded though well, like, that mug was tough so like I was like you know what man I'm gonna record this on myself that is really what it was yeah. um, but like even on the back end of that you know, I said I never, like I said, I never recorded that song, but I, I from that point forward, I just started just writing my own songs, going about my day, and then uh, I had called on my brothers like my day ones, and like my bigger brothers at the time, and like I, you know, I had called them. I spit, I spit like I called really all of them in a line. I think with it like within a pad, within a two days span. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying like, hey, y'all rocking with this, y'all rocking with this, you rocking with this, and then uh, I had called my brother Fuego. Uh, he was like, yeah, bro, you know what I'm saying, Tyler, do that shit, you know what I'm saying, do your thing, whoop de whoop de whoop And then, like, shit, like, by November of that year, that nigga got, he got, he he died, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like, it's like a situation like that. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of my transitions be happening when niggas be done. I'm yeah. tired of that shit. <laughs> and I'm tired of that shit, you hear me? But it was just one of them things, like, I'm not saying, like, I'm rapping for my brother, I'm rapping uh, for, my, for my best friend. It's just, like... These are things that I. These are things that that make me who I am. That I can express myself with. You know what I'm saying? To get to my next destination. To do what I am doing. It you know what I'm saying? A different type of hustle. A different type of mentality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just the things that I I I can use the tools that I got in order to get to the place that I'm trying to get to. Exactly. In order to do for these people. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, like everything is a part of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. These are all just puzzle pieces to me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Tell us about Worldwide. Worldwide? Okay, so what you wanna know about Worldwide? Cause to me, that's the first thing I saw was the clothes. Yeah. And then I saw the music and the brand is dope. Yeah. Like, so when did that start and how did it come about? All right, so how I like to explain Worldwide the right way. Um, it's uh, like I say, you know, everything's about a, uh, a part of a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. And these are just puzzle pieces. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Worldwide, is a website that I've been building. You know what I'm saying? It's called. It's, it was initially called Keywords Worldwide. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And Keywords Worldwide is a directory and marketplace for like local creators to be able to see, like find each other properly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like me being in Houston, before I even go to LA, before I even go to New York, you know what I'm saying? I can tap into, I can search like models. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Click New York. Find who I'm looking for. Same thing for any other category. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if I find local brands over there, I can shop those brands. Before, you know, I before I even go out there, and niggas can be a part of this big flea market effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So to answer your question, you know what I'm saying? Worldwide, I like to explain it as an upside down umbrella effect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because when people think about the umbrella effect, they see this and mm -hmm. everything that falls under it. Well, now I do a whole bunch of stuff. And it falls into it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what worldwide is. You know what I'm saying? The music, the clothes, mm -hmm. everything else that attach that attaches to it, and boom, you know what I'm saying? You know, worldwide. It's very professional, very clean, you do all the designs, everything. Yeah. I like that. I like you know that. what I'm saying? Well, I mean, of course I outsource to like, you know, uh graphic designers like you mm -hmm. know, uh Shine. Yeah, OG Shine, she be helping me with a lot of stuff. Uh, like the whole Shine Gallery. Um yeah, shout out to Shine. I like her a lot. Shine. You know, Shine's a, she's a dope creator. You know I actually what I'm just messaged her today, just like, just checking on you, showing some love. Yeah, you know man. And then like, uh, my people over at Cineverse, they like, they helping me doing a lot of the marketing and stuff with my website. They help build my website and stuff like that. They they local, they in Houston. That's what's That's uh, Princeton Hicks and Country Cowboy. 
you know what I'm saying, that's their business, so, you know what I'm saying, like, I really tap into the people that I've been rocking with over the years, like I said, Country Cowboy name early, like, I know him since back then, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and I'm not, you know what I'm saying, like, everybody out here in the Houston scene, like, we're not all just best friends, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, they're like, this is a big networking game, mm -hmm. and, but it's all about relationships and friendships that you, that you craft a certain type of way to keep it G, right. and like, you know, be able to move forward every, every step, so, I've always had respect for Sean, I always had respect for, you know, Cowboy, and shit, you know, we've all used to, we all kicked in multiple different ways, not even pertaining to business, right. you know what I'm saying, so, everybody that know me from back then, they still rock with me now, the same way, because I'm the same person. So, you know, but that's how the worldwide, that's what worldwide is. But to explain why I use the word worldwide, mm -hmm. it's about abundance. You know what I'm saying? Like, in terms of it's about abundance and how you feel, how you operate, how you, you know what I'm saying, what makes you who you are. Like, I have an abundance of, you know what I'm saying, loyalty, integrity, this, that, and third. It's, but when you throw on a worldwide anything, you feel bigger. Mm -hmm. Automatically, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I watch people throw on a worldwide hat and be like, oh, well, I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they, they feel that, you know what I'm saying? Because they understand my energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a big representation of me at the same time, but I want it to be you, you know what I'm saying? And that and the abundance of how you operate. So that's the key word behind, you know, worldwide itself. So technically, worldwide is not a clothing brand. Technically, no. It's a brand that just got dope clothes. It's dope, yeah. I like that. I like just, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's just another representation of me and how I operate and what I, the energy that I put out. Mm -hmm. And you put a lot into that. What is uh, your main focus, worldwide or your music? I mean, worldwide is the music. The music? I feel that. I like that. <laughs> it's like, that's like asking Wiz, like, what's your big thing? Taylor Gang or Taylor Gang? I ain't gonna lie. I think it's dirty, like, um, I think I did it like in the Abbey Days project that I had dropped, which is like August of 2019-ish type thing, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it, I think I just said this shit one day. But yeah. it really came from when I started crafting the website. When I said worldwide, like keywords worldwide, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's now worldwide. I said it in one song, after that I kept it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember like mm -hmm. exactly like when it like just peaked to me, but it hit, and I was yeah. like, yeah, we're gonna do that. <laughs> you know, I, mm -hmm. I make firm decisions. So, so like, um, what decision was it to drop uh, keywords and just go to worldwide? Uh, that's a marketing move. That's right a marketing there. move. Um, I had talked to a lot of people about the website, and I still haven't officially released it yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was just talking to a lot of people, putting everybody here, and uh, one person. I talked to a couple people. Uh, first person that kind of said something directly about the name was this guy named Tate Mitch, and you know he was just like. And I was just explaining it to him, and he was like, "It's just too long." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sh keep it short and simple. I'm like, "Well, you know, I was like, all right." You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, you know, you gotta make sure that the the, uh, the domain free and you right. know available and stuff like that. So, you know, what I'm saying, being that I go by, you know, what I'm saying? I say nine worldwide and this, this, that, and third. So I was just like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna shorten up, man. Worldwide nine dot com." Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the word, the, the number nine has its own meaning as well. Mm -hmm. I love so, nine, so I go by ninety. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I go by nine six because you know, born in nine six, mm -hmm. and it's really like a play on the perspective of being born in the nineties. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, I was always the the the, the young homie. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I was a young homie that made all the big homie moves. You know what I'm saying? I made all the calls. I made all, I got everything done. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And compared to a lot of different people that I was around, I get I got everything done. You feel me? So like at that point it's like I'm really just like when I say big nine, it's me letting you know I'm the big homie. Like I'm the I'm the big young homie. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I really like stand on that. So it's like, I'm really stepping on boys' necks in a more respectful way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not, I don't play that shit no more. Like, you know about to, ain't nobody about that little homie me. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody put me in a lot of them positions. Like, yeah. there's a difference between opening a door and putting somebody in position. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can tell me, you know what I'm saying? Hey, Tyler, you know what I'm saying? Hey, now I go over there. You know what I'm saying? I got these people that came in time. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be over there. Versus walking me up to them people and saying, hey, it's nine six. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody just do that. Mm -hmm. So every move that I made, I did that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, can't, I can't do that little homie talk. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when they say nine six, I know we we in the 2020s now, so we was old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I be damn. <laughs> I'll be there. You got me. <laughs> Dealing with people in Houston. What are some of the challenges that you've come across? Dealing with people in Houston? I don't know, bro. Because, like, I always, like, made it known. I don't come across a lot of the challenges that the average, you know, I guess, artist has to come about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I did all the groundwork, mm-hmm. you know, as a different entity. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, people know me by multiple different names. Right. I go by Real, you know, I got to go by Central Underground. People know me as Tisa Real. If they knew me as the camera guy, and you know, in the clubs. And, you know, mm-hmm. so, like, the networking problem don't got the branding problem, the marketing problem I don't have because I know how to do those things. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I'm a, uh, you know, I'm a, uh, I know how to fix a problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I have a problem, you know, I'm gonna make a call. Right. I'm gonna figure it out. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I need a website done, I can build a website, you know what I'm saying, for myself. But mm-hmm. if I want a perfect one, I'm gonna call these guys. I'm gonna yeah. call Cineverse, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I want, a, a beautiful graphic. I'm not. No, I'm not the best graphic designer. I can. I make all my album covers. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm saying. Except for the past one, which was Outside Avenue. Sean did that one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. But boom. If I ain't gonna do it to that extent, boom. Make the call. See, a lot of people got uh, a lot of uh, pride. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. They get in their own way. I don't get in my own way. You know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Like. They like, no, nah, I gotta do all this myself. I do everything myself because nowadays I got to, because it's not that I don't trust people, but people ain't got the same ambition for what I got going mm-hmm. on as you know as they would any other time. But they gonna call me when they need some help. But I don't feel I don't feel as though like I can call everybody to help as much as they gonna call me. Yeah. yeah. You got a lot of gems and one thing you said that's a term that is always stuck with me was like not getting in your own way. Yeah. yeah. I remember I said that to somebody one time, they were just like, What do you mean? Like don't get in your own way. Can you explain it? What does it mean to not get in your own way? I mean it, it, at the end of the day it's like you just stopping yourself. Like the moment you make an excuse, you just you just got in your own way. Mm-hmm. The moment you make an excuse, like, well I can't oh well I shouldn't oh, hey man. You know, I'm one of the people, I give out a lot of free game to people for fun. Mm-hmm. And I say I do it for fun just, just to see if you're going to do something with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll put a lot of different people in position. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's like accredited for or they shout my name out. Like, as you know, when y'all look back at this, you know what I'm saying? I actually directly gave y'all names right now, people that have helped me. Mm-hmm. People, a lot of people not going to do that. Yeah. They're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this is my brand. I didn't, make this, I didn't make this. You know what I'm saying? Right. Caught in customs, OG Shine, made worldwide. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's those things. I'm not gonna get in my own way by being overly big headed. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like one thing about me, I'm a Buddhist. You know what I'm saying? So in Buddhist meditation, we 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 uh, they teach you, you know what I'm saying? How to put your ego aside. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or just not even aside, eradicate your ego. Know your knowing your true self. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And really understanding ego, pride, and all the other different things that have you in your own way. Mm-hmm. I'm not in my own way. You know what well, I do everything with a purpose. What uh, religion did you grow up under? Uh, Christianity. Christianity. So when did you convert to being Buddhist? Man, I, I did every different conversion. <laughs> I've been there. That's all I did. <laughs> it's been interesting that you said yeah, that. I respect man. that a lot. I did every different conversion necessary. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, talk to us about that spiritual journey. So, like, uh, you know, I was in South Park. used to go to St. Agnes. It was a Christian academy school. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Moving to the West, the second, the third. It wasn't like none of those like, you know, environmental changes. It was just like, I'm a very logical guy. You know what I'm saying? I like I like getting to the point. I like facts. I like, you know what I'm saying? Like this, you know, one plus one equals two. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise I ain't I ain't asking all them questions. You know what I'm saying? But you know, and then like Tyler the Credit came out. <laughs> and you know, like when y'all can start coming out, you see this fool. Like, I'm like, man, he make it easy to, like, question shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's really what it was for me. And, like, so, you know, of course, you got people that looked at Tyler and started feeling like they supposed to be atheists and this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. But even, it wasn't even that. He just, like, bro, like, he was just against the odds. Mm-hmm. So And nobody else was speaking like that. Exactly. Nobody else was speaking like that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So he just helped me start questioning shit personally, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And... Then like there was just that day in class, you know. So I think it was I forgot what class it is. I don't know if it was like social it was, uh, history or whatever class it was. And they started talking about different religions like mm-hmm. Hinduism, Buddhism, this, that, and third. And I've always been a true believer in karma. You know what I'm saying? So when they 
tied that to Buddhism, mm -hmm. this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? That's when I was like really starting to like, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go like deep, you know, dive into this. Mm -hmm. And then I had a homie, uh, his name was Junior, his family and stuff, they, uh, they live like right next door to me. And they used to have monks at their house. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They used to like really be, you know, uh, like meditating and like learning and stuff like that. And I never got around to like tapping in with them like personally and coming over and stuff like that. Cause of course it's like, you know, this is kind of like a sacred thing. To mm -hmm. thing. But like, that's what like, you know, was like, I started getting all the signs. Like, okay, look, I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? It's coming that way. So like, I think it was like a little bit after I graduated, I found like a Buddhist temple, the Chung Tai uh, Zen Center in Houston. Uh, it's right there in SWAT, you know what I'm saying? You know, so I just tapped in, started going to my classes and stuff like that. And that's, but I started going there personally because like, you know, just really trying to better myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, of course, you know, everybody goes through certain things. Everybody got like different little anger problems and this, that, and the third. You know, feeling misunderstood, not being heard and stuff like that. So it was those type of things that made me want to go there. And I was just like, you know what I'm saying? This is for me type of thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Just like a little getaway type of thing. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the biggest changes you noticed in your life once you started that new practice? I see clearly, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm very punctual. Mm -hmm. Like with my thought process and stuff like that, everything has a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I don't get in my own way. The ego thing, man. You, Ego's a you big... You put your ego to the side, man. Ego killer is something real. Hey man, eradicate that motherfucker. Yeah, like it kind of like ties back to the snob shit. You know what I'm saying? Like people kind of viewed us as like people that just didn't give a fuck about nothing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was always the I don't give a fuck nigga. If we had karaoke night tonight, what song would you sing for us? <laughs> nah, you talking karaoke like, <laughs> like a song that ain't my shit? Nah, mm -hmm. ain't none of yours. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? I, nah, I'd probably be like. <laughs> I don't know some boosty college and some shit. Okay, what? I ain't gonna lie. What? I probably, I probably do that. Uh, definitely some Frankie Beverly. Uh, uh, yeah, you gotta do Frankie. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, that's the move. I'm, I'm kind of fluent in the Frankie. That's, that's the move. I'm, I'm fluent in. I'm fluent in Frankie. That's my go-to at the barbecue. <laughs> hey, man, man, I ain't gonna lie. Don't let no Frankie come all around me. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Some Teddy P or some shit. Mm. But we gotta be like new age with it. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of Larry June. Okay. <laughs> Don okay. Kennedy, we gonna have a great day. Great. Do the one where you give him a word and he gotta. All right, so. I don't know what it's called, what it's called either. I just do it. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna give you a word based off the word. You can give me a song that has the word in it. Whatever song come to your head. So I'm gonna do an example. Yeah. Uh, uh, Papa, I love it when you call me Big Pop, but yeah. throw your hands in yeah. the air, you know what I'm saying, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Swangers. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I'm not good at shit like this. You not? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> like, nigga, I, I think about every, nigga, I see every swanger in my head. <laughs> I can't even think of a line right now with slangers though. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I know Pimp Cena said it in a bunch of stuff. I'm trying Come to think on. of the right one to tell you. Like, right. like who's your one? See, that's why I'm not no freestyle nigga. Okay. Like, you know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. No, for real. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's yeah. why I'm not no freestyle nigga. Because the moment I, like, my mind just gets to turn it. Like, I'm mm -hmm. woody woody woody. I'm like, I'm yeah, gonna write yeah. this shit. You true, you true to yourself though. That's real. That's you me, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can go. Now, you tell us, what you got one for swangers? Nah, see, that's that bullshit. But it's swang, girl. Okay, okay, it's swang in. So that's my fault. <laughs> that's my fault. Yeah, like, nigga. Alright, I'm gonna get another one. Uh, here we go. <laughs> what's, your, uh, what's your writing process like? Writing process? Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm very impromptu. Ooh. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need a beat. You know what I'm saying? I don't. If I gotta be, I'm rocking to that hall automatically. That's um, interesting. You don't even need a beat. Yeah, like I was gonna ask that because a lot of poets. You know, yeah, I started yeah. with poetry too. You don't need a beat, and you find your rhythm within that. Mm -hmm. it's yeah, like, like I could, I could be listening to a song and then automatically just start writing in my head from that point forward. You know what I'm saying? And then I'll turn. I did this literally last night. I literally turn the song, turn the whole song off. Like I'm not even going to the same beat of that song or nothing. It just inspired me to think the way I'm thinking, and then boom, right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I'm not, I'm not getting out the car until I'm like, until I finish writing that song, I'm out. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, like, I'm also in school right now. You know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, for recording arts, we had this, like, song crafting class. And, like, it kind of brought me back to uh, why I like writing. You know what I'm saying? Because I was, 
You know what I'm saying? I took English class very serious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's one thing I actually enjoy. Like, nigga, oh, we got an essay today, nigga? Bet, say this. What? You know what I'm saying? Don't I let there be a poetry that. inside, man. I was up there. I was ready, nigga. Yeah, I, I was a math man. I, <laughs> came, bro, I went to English I and went uh -uh, to sleep. I do some geometry with you. Right? <laughs> hey, I play some pool with you. I hear me? Hey. Geometry, though. <laughs> like, nah, but like, you know what I'm saying? So the sound kind of class, you know what I'm saying? We recently just had like a series of classes where we was like, you know, uh, write a, you know, write out similes, write out metaphors, mm -hmm. and, you know, alliterations, you know, double entendres and stuff like that. So, like, also like, every after every class, you know, like we would, and then we also had to write a song, you know, what I'm saying, write a verse and like doing that shit. Mm -hmm. And uh, after every class, nigga, I'm writing again. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm I'm actually writing, recording, we're going home, recording the song, and you know what I'm saying, sending that hard back to my teacher, like nigga, did I do that shit better this time? You know, I'm doing my thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. I write, bro. Like, writing is an issue. I can, you know what I'm saying? If you give me the task to write five songs within the next couple hours, like, within the next hour, I will do that. Yeah. Like, I don't have It's something you love to do, it's a passion. And you said you started out writing for other artists. Uh, not even that. I was just, I was writing. You know what I'm saying? I didn't write. For, I didn't really write for other artists or nothing. I was just managing at the time. You know what I'm saying? Just putting. You know, and you was in the studio with artists. And yeah, yeah, helping yeah. Helping out a little helping bit. Helping out and like, doing my thing. Like, 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 yeah, like yeah, do this, do that. I said yeah. I said yeah. <laughs> like you didn't take out one of them silks. Yeah, yeah. That's real. That's real. Most people need coaches like that, man. I, I remember my first song I recorded. The dude coached me through the whole thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. The it's about like just knowing your audience, bro, and knowing how to how to deliver the product. The best way possible, you know what I'm saying? That's really all it ever really is. So, mm. when it comes to writing, yeah. Well, shoot, man, it's Big Nine, Mr. Worldwide. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter. That's my main two places. You dig me? Mm. Uh, it's Nine Six Real Worldwide on both platforms. You know what I'm saying? And it, when it comes down to like Apple Music, Spotify, uh, YouTube, it's also Nine Six Real. And YouTube is not since real worldwide, you know what I'm saying? Spelt properly, because I'm one of the punctual niggas. You heard that, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grammar matters.